today I'm going to talk a little bit about gap play in the Forex market, which uh, may not be something you're very used to for a couple of reasons. One, generally, you don't really see gaps in Forex, right? We're trading them 24 hours a day, and therefore, go back to my regular session here, you won't be seeing any gaps. I'm looking at a chart right now, and hopefully you guys can see this as well. It is a chart of the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. Okay, there we go. So, looking at the markets, generally when we're dealing with either futures or we're dealing with Forex, we have a 24-hour market, so we're not usually looking for gap opportunities in those markets. However, what we can do is change the sessions, and really when we're looking at uh, most of these markets, we want to be trading either in Forex or trading in the uh, futures markets when the markets are most active. And when we're looking for those markets to be most active, we're looking generally at the beginning of a particular session. Okay. So when we look at, uh, for instance, right here, the dollar yen, what I've done on TradeStation in this case is I've gone and I've changed my sessions to customized sessions. And I did this one called Forex New York Gaps. So when I'm dealing with a U.S. currency, uh, what I can do is go to Custom Sessions, and I change this one, as you'll notice, to start at 9.30 in the morning until 5 p.m. Now, that's incorporating, for the most part, the 9.30 a.m. equity markets open, as well as looking at about the 5 p.m. Uh, close, not just for the equity markets, but actually because they close at 4, but for the close of the currency markets. That's usually where we start to see things slow up quite a bit. So I changed those hours for Monday through Friday, as you can see, to 9.30 to 5. And I would do the same thing for futures, but futures is much easier actually on TradeStation and a lot of other platforms as well. If I was looking at something like uh, the ES, for instance, I just put in .D, and that gives me what's called the daily session, .D session. And in that case, what we see is there is a gap being shown because it's only showing price activity between the hours of 9.30 in the morning. Actually, this is on exchange time, so it's 8.30 to 3.15 should be right there at 315. So that's how we're able to see gaps both on Forex, and I'll go back there to USD, JPY. When I change my session over to that Forex New York gap, now we actually see gaps that are occurring. It's basically ignoring the overnight trading sessions because I'm focusing primarily on where the heaviest volume is going to be which when we're dealing with U.S. pairs is going to be during the New York session. If I'm dealing with the pound or I'm dealing with the euro, I'm going to be using the European session. And as you notice, what I've done there under Forex London gaps, I'll go to my custom sessions here and show you what that looks like. Because I'm using New York times, I actually started at 3 o'clock in the morning and ran it until 11.30 a.m which would be 4.30 p.m. in London. So I've got it starting at 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. London time. And what I've noticed is that when I put those on for my time frame here, and this one's set on for the session, when I go to things such as Euro USD, now I'm going to be able to see price gaps. Not every day, okay, mind you, but I will see gaps from time to time. And those gaps can give me a trading strategy that I can use for the beginning of each of these sessions. And I'll go over what those specific strategies are. So a gap, when it's a U.S.-based pair, okay, U.S.-based pair, I'm generally, I'm, when I'm using U.S.-based pairs, I'm talking about Aussie dollar, I'm talking about Kiwi dollar, I'm talking about the um, dollar loony, dollar Swissy, and the dollar... Oh, dollar yen. Okay, so those pairs, generally, I'm going to be using 9.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time now to 4.30, actually, sorry, 4.15, 4 p.m. Sorry, I'm thinking of futures. I'm teaching a futures class this week. So I'm using 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. There we go. That's where I'm going to be using for my session. And that's where I'm going to be looking for actual trading that's going on and then seeing where price opens up the following morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. If it is a European or pound, or pound base pair, if I can spell correctly, 
case there, I'm actually going to be using, in this case, 3 a.m. a.m. Eastern Daylight Time to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Because my program is actually based for New York times for most of my uh, currency pairs, so that's why I'm using those times. But that gives me the daylight, uh, I should say, the, the most active times of the trading day, and so to speak, our, uh, our regular trading hours, if you will. Uh, again, I know that most of these markets are traded 24 hours a day, and obviously the Tokyo session could be very active. Uh, the European session is more active, though, and the U.S. session is more active than the Asian sessions are generally. So in this pair that I'm looking at currently, the Euro USD, which you notice I've set this to my London Gap session. So I'm looking at the time frame from 3 a.m. to 11.30 to determine what type of gap I have. Now let's talk about the different types of gaps that we have. I have a couple slides here I'm going to show you. Let's see if it's out. There we go. The two types of gaps that I generally want to look for, one is called an inside gap and one is called an outside gap. With an inside gap, it's where we do change price direction, or I'm sorry, we gap based on a difference between where we closed and where we opened the next session. Most of those inside gaps are going to fill the same trading day. And what happens with these inside gaps, we call them inside gaps because we fail to gap either above the prior day's high or below the prior day's low. Now, as I mentioned, this actually works for both uh, futures and Forex, and obviously it always works for equities as well, except when it doesn't. <laughs> okay, Just because I have these terminologies and these strategies that I look for, it's the highest probability for what is going to happen, but it doesn't guarantee that is what is going to happen. Okay? So we do see that there's a high probability of it occurring, but it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to actually occur. Just be careful about it. One thing we need to do is make sure we set stops to protect ourselves just in case of what we expect to happen doesn't. Now, the outside gap is where we open outside of the prior day's price action, either above the prior day's high or below the prior day's low. Generally, those don't fill right away. If they do, they would generally fill later in the day rather than early in the day, or they generally will fill a couple days later. Now, there's an interesting thing that happens with those outside gaps that sets up a, a pretty nice opportunity for us as well. I'll go over that in just a little bit. So by looking at an inside gap, this is a picture, believe it or not, this is actually from the, uh, the Nifty. I did a lot of trading and teaching over in India, so <clears throat> those markets are very prone to gaps. What we can see is that looking at this chart, here's my gap up. We, when we gapped up, we closed on this prior day, gapped up the next day, but obviously didn't exceed the prior day's high, nor did we go below the prior day's low. That is an inside gap, and it filled very, very quickly. All we did was run up towards an area of a prior high intraday from the previous day and use that as a little bit of supply to push us down. So we can plan if we have an inside gap that generally those inside gaps will fill relatively fast. The same thing happened on the following day. Notice we have the prior day's low, the prior day's high marked off before the market opens. And what happened here is that when we gapped up on this particular day, we gapped right into a nice rally-based drop, the origin of strong selling pressure. It was an inside gap that gave us a high probability to short right off the open and trade until we filled that gap. That's generally what's going to happen with inside gaps. So if we go back out to our currency pair, looking at the euro dollar just for today, here is our gap that happened this morning I'm on a five-minute chart. We can see the prior day's high way up here. I'll just go ahead and give myself a little bit of a margin here. Let's see if I'm going to symbol. Bear with me a moment. There we are. Didn't have a margin on top and bottom. And the prior day's low bring this back further, there we go, we see that the prior day's low is right there. So that is the prior day's price action, looking at uh, the, actually the third and the fifth, it looks like. Oh, just the third right there. So then going into the sixth, we can see that there was a gap down. Was that an inside or an outside gap, based on what I just told you? 
gap down, Luca is saying that it's an inside gap. You're absolutely correct. It is an inside gap because we didn't gap below the prior day's low or above the prior day's high. <clears throat> so what you can see is that we quickly we started to move uh, initially in the direction of the gap, but quickly filled the gap. And so that's what you should anticipate is a relatively fast gap fill. Generally, within the first yeah, anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes is where you should start moving to try to fill the, those inside gaps. Uh, if we take a look back here at other previous day, we can see low and high of the previous day. There is a gap up. Okay, is that an inside or outside gap? What do you think? It says inside gap. Yeah, it absolutely is an inside gap and therefore should fill at some point during the day. Highest probability. Well, it tried to fill initially and then it started showing a little bit of bullish pressure, but because it was an inside gap, look what happened towards the end of the day. It filled the gap exactly before bouncing. That's the highest probability of what will happen. Now, if you have a Forex platform that doesn't allow you to change the session times, just put in horizontal or vertical lines at those times I'm telling you. That's all figure out when the London Open is based on your time frame. So in my case, as I mentioned, it's at 3 a.m. Eastern time. Or if you happen to be in London and you're trading on a London platform, you obviously would start at 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. And that's how I'm going to determine some of these gap plays and obvious areas of where prices are likely to turn. Had I had a regular trading session going on here for Forex, I might not have noticed those turning points. Went back to where was that one? Went back some time here to find it. There it was. And had I not been using that, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Let's pull this back a little more. But not using that gap strategy that I was just talking about, eh, I might have noticed that this was an area of possible demand. And obviously, it's an area of drop, base, and then rally out of that. So I might have expected prices to turn in that area. But by looking at it from a gap as well, it gives me an opportunity to identify the higher probability of where prices are going to turn. So that's why I'm using this gap strategy, using, in this case, you know, the London gap, once again, for the euro-dollar pair, or even the pound-dollar pair, to try to figure out what are my gaps and what is the probability of gap filling during that trading session. So once again, looking at this area, another previous gap, let me move this line down. There's a high, there's a low from this trading day. We see that is also an inside gap. So even though we're starting to find some weakness here, we should know that there's a high probability of that filling the gap sometime throughout the trading session. That means before 11.30 a.m. New York time, we should fill that gap. Sure enough, there it was. Happened at about oh, 9.40, 9.30 is where we filled the gap. Okay. So it just gives you an, an idea of the probability. I would keep this chart available along with the chart of the regular session. So that way I can look at both. I don't want to miss all the candles, obviously. But what you notice is that the volume generally is going to be higher when you have an open session going on or the beginning of a session. So let's go out to USDJPY. Now remember, I'm now looking at dollar yen, so I'm going to switch over my sessions to the New York gap sessions. I'm just kind of yeah, in a way I'm removing the Asian session a lot of a lot of time. And what we see today on the dollar yen is a lot of weakness obviously. And guess what? We're probably not going to be able to close this gap at all. Why? Oh yes, you always use the uh, wicks for the highs and lows, absolutely. The prior days range. You have to use the wicks. Why would this session today, why would this be unlikely to close this gap now? What kind of a gap is it? Exactly. It is an outside gap. We gapped below the prior day's low and therefore have a very low probability of gapping, or sorry, closing the gap. So if we happen to identify some areas of supply on our trading time frame, in this case, like I said, I'm on a five-minute chart, 
I can even look at this on a 15 or a 30 minute chart. If I notice that there's areas of supply that we might be coming into, I now have a higher probability we're taking that short at that supply zone because I know this is an outside gap and it's less likely to go into yesterday's price action. Yeah, exactly, supply zone at 99.15. So with that supply zone there, high probability for me to be able to take that short trade and sell the dollar yen pair. So I use it as kind of an odds enhancer. I can also use it as a trading opportunity. And the reason why I can use it as a trading opportunity, one thing I didn't mention is if you have an outside gap and remember, outside gap, you open below prior day's low or above the prior day's high. Okay, that's, a, that's an outside gap. And tend not to fill. They tend not to fill during trading day. Okay. So that gap should stay open at least until tomorrow, or in this case, at least until 4 o'clock Eastern time today. So it may end up filling during the Asian session. It may end up filling during the European session. But because this is a U.S.-based pair and it, it did an outside gap, it's not likely to fill during the U.S. trading session. Now, the other interesting thing about outside gaps, if there is a move to close the gap, generally, the prior days, yeah, I'm running into the press there, so the prior days low will act as the lack is actually I should say resistance. It's not as strong as supply. Okay. Supply and demand are much, much more powerful than anything else that we have. And that's you know, Sam Side talks about that a lot in his webinars uh, with you guys as well. So this area we're seeing we've got the basing and strong move away from that area. That's the professionals selling off the uh, dollar against the yen. That's supply. That's what I'm looking for for the best opportunities. Okay. Outside gaps are generally bigger gaps. Yes, they don't have to be, but they usually are. And when we do see those outside gaps, if it tries to close the gap, generally the prior day's low will act as a little bit of resistance. Or if it is a gap up, the prior day's high, It'll act as support. Okay. This may give us an additional trading opportunity that we would not have noticed had we only been watching the regular trading hours of our currency pairs. So going back a day, yeah, I'll let that pause there for a second so you can see the text I was just talking about. So if we have an outside gap, not an inside gap, okay? if I trade the euro dollar during U.S. time, I still use the gap session from the European session. Set a question to ask on the Q&A. So, and if I'm using the euro or the pound, I use the uh, European session, the London session, which runs, in my case, from 3 a.m. Eastern time to 11:30 a.m. Eastern time. If I'm using a U.S.-based pair, that's where I'm going to use the uh, 9:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's my time frame. Okay. So let's go back here one day, and you notice on the prior day, there's my prior day's high. Here is my prior day's low. Let's kind of zoom in a little bit so we can change the price a little bit, make it look a little bit cleaner for us. There we go. So now we can see the prior day's high right there, prior day's low right there. We had a gap up. Notice the open price, it's green candle. So we open at the bottom of the body of that green candle. That is an outside gap. What happened was prices traded back down into the prior day's high, but it use this area as what? So then I'm using that prior highs area as. 
so support. Yeah, exactly. And that would have given us an opportunity to go long right at the open. You can see as we started moving up, we moved from an area of roughly uh, 21, 9921, all the way up to 99, uh, 36, and even higher, I believe. Just kept moving to the upside. So we would have been able to make at least 20 pips, if not even more, on that move to the upside just on an intraday chart. It's a couple hundred dollars. Actually, a little bit more than that. So that's one of the things I can look for is if we have an outside gap, Generally, if we try to close some of the gap or things in the morning like that very early, we should get a bounce at whatever that prior day's high was. Uh, this was obviously an outside gap that never came down the hill. Go back here in time. So that's a, very often what will happen is that we won't try to fill whatsoever. But if we do, notice right here we had an outside gap. This is the prior day's high. It tried to come down and fill but it couldn't fill 100%. So there's a high probability we were going to keep going in the upward direction because we had an outside gap. We actually never even came to the prior close or prior high. We came close to it, but balanced very strongly to the upside. It should have told us that that was likely to continue that overall trend. Moving back a further time frame here, what type of gap do we have here, inside or outside? Well, we put in our prior day's low, prior day's high. And there, using the wicks. And right here, that is exactly the inside gap. Therefore, it's a high probability of filling. What happened? We tried to go lower, but we held this area as demand. This is our demand zone, if you notice. Right through here, drop, base, and then strong movement to the upside. That's our rally. Now, we did have a quite a long tail there that would have been difficult to trade, but we should have anticipated gap closure. We almost closed right here. We eventually did finally close later in the day. So the question is, uh, what percentage of gaps close? I don't know exactly, because there are a lot of different gaps. And this is relatively new to me for application in the uh, currency markets. I've been using this in the Forex futures markets and futures as a whole for quite some time. And I would say that uh, with the inside gaps, the majority of them do close but within the first 15 to 30, uh, 15 to 45 minutes of the day, but not all of them are going to close. It's not a 100% type of thing. It just gives me an idea of a high probability. And if I have an opportunity to trade that, I will take it. Uh, for instance, if I use, I'll go back to my regular sessions here. As I mentioned, I was just in my futures class this morning teaching. And if I go to at es.d, this is my intraday chart of the S&P futures, but it's only showing me the 9.30 to 4.15 trading times for the futures. So it's not showing me the after hours. And you can see right here that if you were looking at this, there's my high. Prior day's low is right there. And you can see this is kind of the basing that was, became our little bit of supply later in the afternoon. That becomes our demand if we gap up. There we gapped up above the prior day's high, came down, just touched that at prior day's high, and we took off to the upside. Now, it didn't last long. I was actually expecting it to go to about 16.21. That was my price target. But it did move from 16.15 and a quarter all the way up to 16.19 and a half, which is a nice four points on the ES for reversal. This one did close the gap on the second time, the second try. This was the first try to close. It couldn't do it because it was outside. Second time was that it was actually able to close. Is the future trade station be able to, to uh, isolate it? Yeah, Ninja Trader allows you to isolate too. You can create your own time frames there where you're looking at uh, custom zones. You just have to create them yourself. So if we go out to let's see, do pound yen. So if I'm looking at pound yen, instead of looking at regular session now, I'm going to go to Forex London gaps. Okay. And if I'm doing a London base or European base security, okay, the euro or the pound, I typically will use the session from this up here on the text. So if it's a euro or pound pair, okay, then I use this would be 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. 
if I'm using a U.S. dollar pair, not against the euro or the pound. So it's the U.S. dollar against other majors, or even exotics, or, or, cross, or not cross pairs, but exotics or um, the majors against the U.S. dollar. That's where I'll use 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time to 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Let's see, what was Ron asking here? Is this recorded? Oh, hopefully it is. Yeah, I can say it is. And yeah, be able to watch the recordings. So what we can see here is on the pound yen, what kind of gap do we have today? Remember, I'm now in the European session here for the gap. So it started at 3.30 in the morning until 11.30 this morning on the New York Times. So there's our gap down. What type of gap was that? I'm basically filtering out Asia, yeah, in a way. I know Forrest is 24 hours. I'm just showing you a little bit of a, a, an opportunity for you. This is an outside gap, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So when we have that gap to the outside, I should have expected that yesterday's low area, which is right here, I usually use the, the bottom wick and the body of the candles, that should act as a little bit of a resistance today. Did it? What do you think? On the pound yet? Or it's an opportunity for a gap, right? Or sorry, to keep the gap open. So the way I'm finding gaps, because it is 24-hour trading, you know, normal session, this is what I would look at. And I'm not seeing anything other than this is a good supply zone. But to give me additional confirmation to make me feel better about the supply zone I'm shorting here today, what I can do then is change my sessions. Change to my London session, meaning... I'm using, okay, if you're in the European markets, okay, let's do that. If you're using European markets, the time zone would be 8 a.m. GMT to 4.30 GMT. That's what it is. Okay. MT4, I've actually never used uh, the sessions on that, so I'm not sure, but I imagine you'd be able to change it for that as well. At the very worst case scenario, if you don't have any way of isolating these gaps, you would take a look to see, do you have a horizontal drawing tool? We'll just draw a line where those gap sessions would tell, or would be. So generally, the ones that are going to work the best, yes, are the open session of New York and open session of the European markets. So if I'm using a pound-dollar pair, the pound-dollar here, I am still going to be using the European markets. So there, you can see I still have a set on Forex London gaps. So in this case, what type of a gap do we have today? There's a gap down. Did we gap below the prior day's low? What do you think? That's yeah, an inside gap. You're right. Therefore, we should have a high probability of filling that gap today. Sure enough, prices came back up, tried to fill the gap, didn't quite. It came very close to filling that gap or being able to reverse. So it's just showing me the probabilities. So if I've been looking at a 24-hour session on Forex and I was noticing this area as a possible demand, the fact that we were an inside gap and moving into that area as demand would give me a higher probability that I should buy that. Let's see, if we take a look at the 24-hour chart, you can see that right there is that area of demand that I was just talking about on the larger time, I'm sorry, on this time frame. We had that basing and rally. And as we got down to that area, I knew it was likely to hold because of the inside gap that happened. And therefore, we pushed back to the upside. We weren't able to continue to break down. So if I was already short on the pound against the dollar, I would have needed to book my profits as I came to that area. That's what it's selling. Now, you won't see frequent gaps unless you change to the sessions. Why only the high and low the sessions rather than 24 hours? Because that's the way the gap strategy works. If you look at 24 hours, you don't see the gaps whatsoever. If I change over, so I'm only looking at the trading session, which I'm concerned with, and we can do UR CHF. Not sure if there'll be a lot of gap play there or not, but once again, I can take a look to see if it's an inside or outside gap. This morning, when we opened on the Euro Swiss, using the London time frame, trading from 
starts at 3 a.m. to 11.30 Eastern Time or 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. London Time. We see that was a gap down. But it was a gap down that didn't break the prior day's low, and therefore it was an inside gap, and that inside gap had a high probability of filling. We could have gone long right near the open, put a stop below the low, and target that gap closure. I generally do this on a five-minute chart. You could do it on a smaller time frame, or even a 15-minute would work as well. So looking at a 15-minute chart, this, it shows you the same picture here. You see we gap down, but not below the prior day's low, giving you an opportunity to trade for the gap closure, perhaps even holding on for a longer period of time. Yesterday, we had an outside gap. There's the prior day's high, right? Therefore, that prior day's high area should act as a little bit of demand so when we gapped up outside, we shouldn't have expected gap fill. And what happened? As we came down, we used that area as a little bit of a bouncing point yesterday. That was near the low of the day. It wasn't exact, but it gave us an opportunity to identify the fact that this is less likely to close the gap. Sometimes it doesn't work. Here you see the Euro Swiss. There's a prior day's high, a prior day's low. This gapped up, and it was an inside gap, which should have filled... That was the highest probability, but well, for whatever reason, it did. It kept going. So that's why we always have to make sure we put in stops to protect ourselves. You won't see this if you go to a daily chart. You have to use an intraday chart to be able to see any of the gaps whatsoever. Okay. Black form, you have no gap on Euro Swiss. Well, again, you might have to change the time frame, depending on what it is you're looking at. So if I go to let's see, AUD, USD, been changed by times over, not for the London session, but the New York session from 9.30 New York to 4 p.m. We can see a lot of outside gaps that didn't fill. That's pretty common. If it's an outside gap, it's not likely to fill. Here's the one inside gap we had, and sure enough, it filled almost immediately. Outside gaps, though, tend not to fill. This was an outside gap. You kind of zoom in on that area as I noticed it right here. You can see we gapped down, but we did not gap beyond the prior day's low. And because we didn't gap, I'm sorry, we did gap beyond the prior day's low. It's an outside gap. So since we gap beyond the prior day's low, we shouldn't close the gap. We should be using this area as supply. And what happened? We did move up, and we used this area as a bit of supply. Almost, yeah, pretty much filled the gap, but used it as supply anyway because it's outside. Okay? So you... Uh, so somebody's saying use the I session indicator. Okay. Generally, if it's an inside gap and it's going to start closing, I would use the uh, gap down. Let me see if I can find a good inside gap trading opportunity. I'll go to a five minute chart. Usually, it's a little better. And we'll go back for a bit of time as well just to see if I can find one. Again. Okay. It's back. And the Aussie dollar, do we have an inside gap that closed? There we go. You wouldn't have to search too long to find one. This is an inside gap that closed. There's our prior day's low right there. Here's our prior day's high right there. Here's a small gap down. And if I'm playing for the gap closure, this one didn't really give me a very good opportunity to trade because the gap closed very, very quickly. But, oops, there we go. There's my gap down. It's inside of prior day's price action, so therefore it's likely to close the gap first thing in the morning. I could go short, uh, long in this case, right off the open, with my stop below. Sometimes there's an area of demand right in that zone. Sure enough, we have this drop, little base, and then rally. Started the overall move to the upside. Entering in on a long, immediately with the stop below, gave me the opportunity to play for the gap closure. The reward to risk ratio was not very good, however. So the better thing for me to do would be to wait to see as we start pushing into that gap itself, place a stop under the low that we've established so far for the day. So if we go to a one-minute chart, the gap is not depending, well, it is kind of depending on the broker, but they should most of the time be similar. Sorry, go back to that five minute. What was the date on that inside? There it is. So there's my inside gap, and what you see is that we gapped down. 
started moving down a little bit, but once we started gaining that bullish pressure, we might have been able to go long on a smaller time frame with our stop below that demand zone from the larger time frame. Remember that I drew out these two lines of demand from the five-minute chart. So we would have been able to play for that gap closure with relatively low risk compared to our reward in this case, even though it looks kind of small because of the size of this chart. It's a one-minute chart. So that would have been an entry once we started seeing some sort of confirmation you know, at around 103.40. Stop would have been below 38, maybe a little bit more, and our target would have been 50. So about a 10 pip move or less than three pips of risk. Now, uh, good question. If we have an, op an outside gap that opens into an area of prior supply or demand, I do expect it to try to close. But it should only go to the prior day's high or prior day's low. All right. And then once it does that, it would typically reverse. Let's see if I can find an opportunity of that as well. High and low first the minutes in London open. You might be able to use that as an opportunity for finding trading. USD, CAD, and Looney. Switch this back over to the New York session. Oh, no, it's on. Okay. And today is an outside gap on the Looney. You can see we gap down beyond the prior day's low. If we hit a strong area of demand, I would expect prices to move back up, but only back up towards a supply or at the very highest yesterday's low. This area will act as a pretty strong supply zone if prices should try to move back up into that area. As you can see, we couldn't even get that high. All we did was to simply hit another area of prior supply. And because the trend was bearish and gapped in that direction, most people were bailing out of the dollar against the loony and gave you another trading opportunity. So that's what I'm looking at as far as gaps go. I'm looking to see is it inside or an outside gap. And what's I, what I mentioned before, back up here again, I'm generally looking at a session that begins at 9.30 a.m. Eastern until 4 p.m. Eastern for my U.S. base pairs. So again, for the U.S. base pairs, it's going to be USD, CAD, USD, JPY, USD, CHF, what else we got there? AUD, USD, uh, we also have NZD, USD as well. So the majors, including the US dollar, you would use them as a US based pair, and that's the time frame they would use to figure out which gap you're in. Yeah, the E6 is. Uh, ES and E6, oh yeah, they absolutely use that. Absolutely. Now for the European base pairs, as I mentioned, I would use that for Euro dollar. I would use that for pound dollar. And any cross pair that involves Europe. So EUR, AUD, it doesn't really matter whatever it is. So if you've got the Euro or the pound as the base pair, the first one, I would use that particular time frame rather than use the U.S. base pair side. So as I mentioned uh, this morning, ESM13, and we were watching this in our class today. However, this was a trading opportunity that may not have been found unless you looked at ES.D, which shows me only trading that's occurring between 9.30 a.m., in this case 8.30 Central Time, until 3.15 or 4.15 Eastern Time. Right there's our opportunity to enter into the trade. Did a nice move to the upside. Hit our normal reversal we get at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. I should say New York time, and then drop. So yeah, the uh, Asian session at high and low is not going to be as powerful because you're not seeing as much volume or liquidity being traded during that time. So that's why I can actually cut those out and look at this as a gap play opportunity. Uh, was the difference between 8, 3 a.m. Eastern and 8 a.m. GMT? That's, that's the same. I was just showing you the two different time frames for somebody who's using a, a GMT-based platform versus a New York-based platform. I have a New York-based platform. So when I switch this over to you know, exchange time or even local time, it's using East Coast. That's what it's using for me. But some people don't have that. If you're in the Europe, uh, European markets, or using a European-based broker, it may just be showing you GMT or even European time. So you have to adjust. So the gap is produced basically on the very first trade that happens, 8 a.m. London or 9.30 a.m. New York. That's the 
first trade that occurs, and that is set, that sets the, uh, whether or not we are in a gap to the upside or a gap to the downside. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. And based on the Kiwi, we didn't really have any gaps here. Make sure I'm on the right session. Nope. There we go, Forest, New York gaps. Now we can see outside gap, outside gap, tends not to fill. Inside gaps are the ones that tend to fill, with exceptions for both. Chase Nation looks great for various techniques. Yeah, it can be. It definitely can be, but like I said, MT4 is also very, very strong. There's a lot of things you can do with it there. And even other platforms. Ninja Trader is pretty good. You can change the sessions there. I've done that as well. Uh, so in a way, yes, I am manufacturing gaps, but it, it has such a high probability of working out for me that I've been using it. That's, that's what I do. So I am manufacturing gaps. There are no real gaps, but I'm manufacturing them, anticipating where they would be if they were. Okay. Well, for the other major turning points of the day, you actually have to come to my pro trader class, unfortunately. Uh, I'll actually be teaching pro trader in London next month. I'll be out there across the pond in uh, London. I'll also be with you guys again in an FX Street webinar on the 23rd. So I'll be hitting the London on the 17th of this month. Sorry, not next month, but this month. 17th for about a week. And uh, I'll be with you guys again on the 23rd for another WebEx uh, session. I don't really look too much at novice versus pro gaps. Uh, we do that more in the XLTs. But uh, I focus primarily on inside versus outside gap. So unfortunately, I have to get going because I have a, a future class that I am teaching. Hopefully, I gave you a little bit of an insight as to uh, some of the opportunities that you may have in trading the forex markets that you didn't even realize. I uh, will see you again, hopefully very soon, in the, one of the webinars here on FX Street. And until then, trade safe and trade well. See you soon. Mm -hmm.